Wow, welcome everyone. Today we have an amazing barbarian build with over pit 130. And yes, this is going to be a Thorns barbarian with over 380,000 HP. And here is a demonstration of the barbarian player that has just cleared pit 130 without using the holy bot potion. And this is a pretty incredible and also unkillable build. And that's pit 130. So in this video, we want to learn how to make this barbarian work and how powerful it is. So before I start anything, a big shout out to Do Not Hit Me for sharing his build and also updating this one. And if you guys do want to follow him, come over to his YouTube channel as he constantly updates the Thorns Barbarian build. And over here, we do have a screenshot of his current stat with 380,000 life. And this means he's pretty much unkillable in all the content and deals tons of damage using the powers of Leap, Earthquake, and also tons of thorns with so much HP stacking. Now, of course, similar to all of the builds, let's come over to some of the build replays and have a look at how this build works. The first thing you can notice is no matter how much the monster hits him, he's not taking much damage, right? And the second thing is because he have over 380,000 HP and he's quite durable, he can withstand all the monsters and just stood there. And yes, he is spamming spells, which provides him with damage reduction, additional damage, and also more life regen as he shouts. But overall, as we're gonna see in the score rotations on the second part, he doesn't really have to do anything. You can press any button, guys, there's no urgency, there's no rush, and you're just face tanking everything that is on the map. You can notice that he's looking for elites and also packs of monsters, while leaping around with almost no cooldown. The power of this build is of course coming from Thorns. As they group more enemies together, Thorns will deal AoE damage to them, and in return dealing more damage to the elite monsters. It might not seem that he's doing a lot of instant bursts of damage, but keep in mind guys, this is a pit level 3 130, not 300. 130, after pit level 100, the monster's damage does not scale, but the monster's health will scale dramatically. And even though it might look a little slower as he clear the pit, this build has zero death because not, nothing touches him, right? As he spams his rotations and other spells, the monsters are just hitting and also killing themselves to death, which is actually really incredible and also amazing as he passes through the content. And the, mon the more monsters are attacking him, the more AoE thorns that damage he deal, and the quicker it is for him to finish the dungeon. This build works wonderfully at lower tier pit dungeon as well because at lower tier, the monsters die almost instantly as you, you know, stand there in front of them and they kill themselves to death, right? Now, fast forwarding to the boss fight for the Thorns build. Because he has so much cooldown reduction and also the ability utility on the rain with aspects, he's lowering the cooldowns of his leap, which is pretty much instant. And in order to do more single target damage against the boss, and this is not a good one, because this one summons, but this one doesn't do that much direct damage, right? He is constantly attacking with his basic spells to gain attack speed damage reduction while leaping on the boss. And this provides him with additional staggering, and the damage is very consistent coming from the Earth Strike, or the Earth Shake. He does have tons of Earth Shake duration and also tons of close damage increase. He's not running critical strike, not running critical damage, but this is majority coming from Earth. Earth Quick. <laughs> and yes, the Earth Quick is actually very sizable and very good in terms of damage reduction, damage increase, and it is very consistent against the boss. If we fast forward a little bit, even though it takes a few minutes because he's not using the Holy Ball, guys, it is very stable. And during this whole fight, he's not losing any HP because he's so tanky with so much HP. And I do think this could be one of the best safety build and also consistent build for the higher level barbarians as you try something different. You try something, let the monsters kill themselves as they hit you with a thorns build. Now coming over to a builder's guide for this particular build. This is a learning builder's guide guys. Of course the credits goes to do not hit me for sharing his build. I have made a small variation to the build which I'll explain to you guys throughout the choices of the stats. In terms of the skills, we're going with three different shots, with Leap, which has pretty much no cooldown, Frenzy to provide us with damage reduction, and also Steel Grabs for vulnerability, which is very, very important. We're also going with increased vulnerability damage against enemies with a two-hand axe. So coming over to our gears of choice, we are running one uber unique item, and this is the only uber unique you needed for the Doombringer. The biggest factor for this item, because this provides us with tons of maximum life, chance to heal 
which is a percentage life, and also chances to lower the enemy's damage with a shadow damage onto enemies, and this provides us with more survivability. So in terms of the choices of gears and artifacts, and let's briefly go over them. So we are using the razor plate, and this is a big factor. You can get a greater FX on razor plate, which will help, but ideally you want a bigger percentage damage as well, and this will be a big factor. In terms of the helmet, he's going with damage reduction to bleeding enemies. At the same time, you want to try to get maximum life, cooldown reduction if you can. Strength is also optimal for the greater FX. You're going to notice the tempering over here. He is crafting a lot of points into imposing presence in the passive, together with additional thorns gained who are fortified. Now, because he's always taking damage, he's always fortified, you are always getting your thorns. And I do want to come over here to imposing presence to show you guys why he's stacking this. This is the biggest factor how he gets 300,000, 380,000 HP because he's stacking over 9 ranks of imposing presence, which will give him 6% increased maximum life with each point added. So it's quite important for you guys to roll your gears into imposing presence. And if you get this one to higher level, you have even high HP for survivability and also even more thorn. Now in terms of the gloves and also in terms of the boots over here, this is actually a combination come from the Vampatic season. Because he will have a lucky hit chance to do Vampatic Strike, which provides him with more vulnerability on the gloves. And also if you come over to the boots, when he evades, he becomes bats, and this allows him to reduce cooldowns and also inflict Vampatic Curse. This is a combo set for the Vampatic season, and he's using this one for the Barbarian. Now he's going with maximum strength and also maximum life for the great effects if you can find those. The temporary, you're going with damage while berserking and also additional thorns while fortified. You will notice that additional thorns while fortified will be a big theme of the build and you're still going with imposing presence for more maximum life. In terms of the pens, he's going with leap creates earthquake, which is very powerful for both damage reduction and also dealing additional damage against the boss. And this is a big thing. Now I mentioned there is a small adjustment I have made compared to his build. Over here I decided to go with movement speed on the boots, while he went for rank 3 to the balling skills. This is the only variation for the build because I think everything else looks great. Now one of the reasons I didn't go for the balling skills plus 3 is because notice in the video he does have pretty much no cooldown on his skills. And I feel like if you are having not much trouble with cooldowns, you don't have to go with brawling skills. But that is a choice. You can still go with movement speed for overall mobility and also travel through the map faster to clear the pit faster. Now in terms of the two-handed weapon, the bigger FX over here we're going is going to be ground stomp creating earthquake earthquake that provides us with up to 50% additional damage. Again, this together allowed us to deal even more damage. The bigger factor is to having additional damage while standing in earthquake, when not really ground stomping. Well, now as for the one hand weapon, we're going with the inner calm aspects to give us the multiplier to 30% additional damage. Together with the crafting on the weapons, you can see we're going with strength, maximum life, vulnerability damage, earthquake duration, and finally close damage for most of the weapons as we find them. And finally, for the other two-handed, he decided to go with two-handed axe. And as for the two-handed axe, we're getting thorns damage that becomes AoE around you. And this will also provide him with additional damage as he group enemies together. The choices of crafting and also affixes on the weapon are the same for all three weapons. In terms of the Doombringer, you do want to roll onto maximum life when you can. And this is quite important because the majority of the reason for the Doombringer, it is a maximum life. Damage is okay, but everything else, you don't really need a core skill, right? In terms of the amulet, he's going with additional damage done with physical element. This happens every 7 seconds with a rotation. And he's going with more strength, more cooldown reduction, and also finding any resistance he's missing. With the theme of amulets and also rains, he's also getting close damage while, and also additional thorns damage while for the fight. So here you can see the rings. We're going with two utility rings. One provides us with cooldown reduction to our shells with ball shifting. The second one will provide us with cooldown reduction as we leap onto enemies. And this is a bigger theme. As he reduced leap cooldown, he can leap indefinitely, creating earthquake, 
scanning additional damage and also damage reduction while in Earthquake to deal damage against the boss and also single target. We are going with brawling skill cooldowns and also damage to close enemies in the tempering. You are stacking strength, maximum life, and also cooldown reduction together with any resistance you're missing onto the rings. Now the choices of socket will be vulnerability, maximum life of course, and any resistance you're missing. Now briefly going through the skills and also paragons. We are going with additional ranks into Frenzy and because we don't need brawling skills, so we need some points over here before we get to the next stage. So Frenzy will provide us with additional attack speed together with damage reduction and also this is a bigger factor, right? The damage reduction. Now as you come over here, all the points goes to Imposing Presence, which gave us tons of life. And here we go with more points into Tougher Snail, which will provide us with additional thorn. We are going with all the points into Shouts, which will give us healing by percentage of the maximum life and also additional damage reduction. Damage reduction while berserking and also causing additional berserk while we deal damage against enemies is quite good because we have such a low cooldowns with leap. We'll be going with additional damage and also damage reductions over here together with casting steel grabs to give us vulnerability, bleeding enemies and also more damage while fortified. Now final point will come over here for the additional damage while berserking. I'll briefly go through the Paragon because I haven't got time to craft them for the pathing, but we'll go through the Glyphs over here. We're going with Aya for the Berserking damage increase, which is very important for the Barbarians. We are going with additional damage against close enemies with Territorial. With Marshall, we'll be lowering our Shouts cooldown. And with Revenge, we'll deal additional damage with the Thorns damage, of course. And with Untaunted, we'll deal additional damage while Fortified. Finally, we'll go with Rumble to deal additional damage through Earthquake and dealing additional damage for Earthquake against the boss. Now coming over to skill rotations. We have talked about it. It is a very straightforward build because you're not in an urge, not in a rush. You can learn and take your time to learn the skill rotations to see how you can deal the most damage. Because the defensive part is not a problem. The damage part, well, you want to group enemies together. Because you have the Needle Flare Aspects, and of course when you get a Shine, it does help. Because you have the Needle Flare Aspects, when you group enemies together, it will help with Steel Grasp. As you group them together, as you leap around to create Earthquake and standing still for 3 seconds, this is when you deal the most damage. And as monster hits you, they will deal AoE damage to themselves. And this will be the bigger thing as you clear through the content and fly through your way over Pit 130 with this super tanky build. Now, as for the boss, you do want to be constantly leaping onto the boss while doing normal attack to gain damage reduction. Because during this time, as you leap onto the boss, you are creating Earthquake, you are also providing yourself with additional seconds of Berserk. And the only downside is you want to stand in steel to gain the inner calm increased damage. And I'm sure you guys will get used to it. This is a very durable build, and there's not much to explain because you're not dying. So the only thing is, you have to figure out a way to do more damage. And this is by standing still, standing in Earthquake, casting your brawling skills to gain more additional Berserk, and this combined will allow you to do more damage. Now before we finish the video, it is very important for me to highlight in the comments our friend here has highlighted the elixir and also incense he's using. You might have noticed that he's using two elixirs and also three incense for one player. How does he do this? Well, I forgot to mention that you can be crafting elixirs, and there is an elixir over here that can double stack with other elixirs. This is very important. You can craft this one, and then you can craft another elixir that provides you with health. You can pop both elixirs, and you gain tons of additional life because of this. So both of this elixir and also elixir of fortitude will give you additional life, and this combined will give you 25% more additional life. In terms of the incense guys, you can come over here and craft incense. Now how you want to work with incense is, a player can pop one incense, but players in his party can pop two different incense. So what he will be doing is, he will start a party with three friends, and they will pop the incense for him, or with two friends that's enough. So he will pop one of the incense, the other two friends will pop the other two incense while next to him, and then they will leave the party and let him start his pit. So he will start the pit solo with 130 and while having five different potions. And this is a hidden factor to become stronger in the endgame using potions and also power of friendship. 
So hopefully you guys enjoyed this learning guide. I'll be learning more cool builds for Diablo 4 in the new season and very excited to share this one. Of course, I'll have the links to Do Not Hit Me's channel and also the highlights he shared over here. It is very cool and I do recommend you follow him and also learning from him.